I'm curious as to how many of you had this car as a poster on your bedroom wall growing up. I certainly did. I remember loving this car. So many of you have said, please, please drive the Acura NSX or the Honda NSX if you prefer. And here we are in a 1995 NSX T. Now, Honda's original benchmark for this car was the Ferrari 328, later revised to be the 348. But what happened was Ferrari was put on notice. No longer could their cars just be fast and sexy. They had to be reliable too. It is not uncommon for a lot of NSX owners to get 200,000 or more trouble-free miles out of their cars. And when it did enter the US market, this was an expensive car. It, of course, didn't have the reputation of being a Ferrari, but here was a mid-engine automobile that looked as great as this does. It's a new exotic car that can compete with just about everything that's out there, hand-built by a small group of engineers. They use new materials and new thinking. This is many of the things that can be said about the GTR 20 years later. What's different is that this is a fairly simple car with a chassis tuned with help from Ayrton Senna. So that right there is an awful lot of pedigree to put into this car. Now the real difficulty or downfall of the NSX is actually that it existed for about 15 years with not really that much development. So we brought along at 97. In the 95 it makes 270 horsepower. And the reason we brought the 97 was because that was the year the V6 was bumped up in displacement to 3.2 liters and made 290 horsepower. Now it doesn't have that initial punch, it's certainly not turbocharged, but believe me, the NSX engine can still howl. At above 6,000 RPM, it's that glorious VTEC. So does that mean you have to cane your engine, you have to drive above 6,000 everywhere you go? No, but you're going to want to. <laughs> so starting in 97, they changed the engine on the NSX. It became this engine, the 3.2 liter V6. And they also swapped out the five-speed gearbox for this six-speed unit. Now that did change the usable power of the car quite a bit. Strangely though, I find myself preferring the gear ratios of the five-speed. second and third gear in that 95 seemed a little bit better suited for canyon carving. I just feel like the five speed extracted so much out of the engine. They were made it so well. Either way, either transmission that you choose, if you're into the NSX, you're gonna love it. It's such a brilliant car. I do like the better mid-range grunt on this larger engine six-speed transmission. That takes an already very usable full sports car and makes it that much simpler to live with. But now that I've gotten a little bit more power, I can tell it can just take more. I would say drive an original NSX before you decide that it needs a whole lot more power. I'm amazed. It just keeps getting better and better the faster you go. It feels like the NSX is really in need of about 350 or so horsepower, maybe 300 pound-feet of torque, to really just be perfectly balanced power to chassis capability. It's still crazy fun, but it feels like that's what this car should have had stock. It would still be remarkably competitive today. The styling on the NSX, it remained almost unchanged for its entire 15-year run. It has a real timeless beauty about it. In 2002, they did away with the pop-up headlights, but frankly, I think they're pretty awesome on this car. And everything about it is that kind of standard mid-engine arrangement. Really low nose, mid-cabin. It's got that long tail that was a bit controversial when it came out because people weren't used to seeing that much overhang on a sports car like this. But from a proportion standpoint, it really works. Plus, it gives it a usable trunk back there. This car looks great in bright colors because a lot of things about it are so simple. So you really have to look carefully at the sculpture of this car, at the surface transitions, and how well everything works together. Now, the designer of the NSX studied the 360-degree visibility of the F-16 aircraft. 
So once you know that, a lot of things about the NSX are gonna start to make sense. The interior on the NSX is a big surprise. I mean, except for the gathered leather that makes it feel a little bit dated, the material quality, the feel of things, the ergonomics are better than a lot of sports cars that have been made before this car and since. It's not necessarily that it looks modern, it's just so well designed and everything is so simple and clean. The shapes are things you can relate to. There's a lot of interesting touches on the interior as well. For example, these window switches seem a little strange because they're canned at an odd angle, but once you put your hand over here, you realize they're canted perfectly to meet the way your fingers are gonna come in when you're driving. Lots of little touches like this that just make this car inviting and pretty spectacular. The seats are pretty great. The bolsters are nice. They are actually a little bit wider than I was expecting. I mean, I slide around them a tiny bit. I was a little shocked because I wasn't sure that I was gonna fit, but the owner of this car is a little bit taller than Todd and I, and so he had the seat cut down. So that means I fit beautifully in this car. The NSX has a variable ratio electric power steering rack. The biggest surprise about the steering is how really slow the steering rack is. Now you get used to it pretty easily, and it's got a lot of weight to it, so it asks you to be involved, but you've got an awful lot of arm travel on a canyon road. I'm still warming to it, but I think it's growing on me. Yes, you have to crank the wheel over further, but... Then you have such fine control of your corner. That's what makes this car so good. And this has traditional mid-engine handling. So 40% up front, 60% in the rear. You gotta do your braking before the corner. Find the apex, put your foot in it. Definitely a car that you can settle and adjust with just the throttle. A little bit more body roll than I might like, but that's the tiny bit of sacrifice to make this car usable in all situations. I do feel like the suspension is a bit soft, but the NSX definitely still holds its own. It's one of those cars you can tell over time it will make you a better driver. It's not gonna save your ass that much. But if you really learn how to dance with this car, you're gonna become an awful lot better. The tough thing about the NSX as a used car is that, well, the prices are kind of all over the place. You can find them for less than 30 grand. Most of them are just under 40, but then there's those that are going for 60 and even $100,000. The 95 that we drove was $37,000. Let's call it 40 grand. For 40 grand, you can get a whole lot of Porsche Cayman S. Plus, on the Cayman S, I do prefer the handling. It's got a sharper, more direct variable steering ratio that Frankly, it's better than the NSX. I'm a big fan of the Cayman S. It's an amazing car to drive. It's every bit as fun and rewarding as the NSX. But there's something here, intangible, analog, that makes this car unique and special. You're not gonna win a bar fight on stats with the NSX, and that's really not what it's about. You need heavy horsepower, you need to be somewhere else. But in driver involvement, this is up there, especially for 30, 40 grand. Not for 60, but for 30, 40 grand, hell yeah. I really like the NSX, but the prices still seem to be very high and they're, they fluctuate all over the map. The problem is, for a good car, this car was $37,000 for a nearly 20 year old car, I can't justify that kind of money when there's so many other brilliant cars on the market for that kind of money. The interesting surprise for me is that I realize as we're coming to a close, I'm going to miss this car. I mean, that's kind of the biggest endorsement I can give it, is that I wish I had more time. I wish I could get to know it better. Because of the balance, because of all the pieces that are so well engineered and work in harmony in this car, I know that if I had one, I would grow to love it even more.